Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're doing the Excel European Outlook for today's second video. So as was on Tuesday, this is your 30 day slash 42 day uh, European forecast. And I should get on that for you in a moment. Just to say that first video today was our 6 7 UK weather forecast. And there's a 10 to 14 day with all of the regular features on the way later on this afternoon as well. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much everybody for doing that for Gav's weather vids. Thank you so much, everyone. And thanks so much to ECFWF.int for supplying the charts as well, of course. It's so easy. Right, going to start off with week one mean sea level pressure anomaly, taking us through week we're currently in, the 13th to 20th of May. So uh, this, uh, this week has low pressure through much of Western Europe, part to the southwest of the UK, and I'm also affecting France, Germany, low countries. Um, Spain and Portugal too. We've got some high pressure in the far east and northeast of Europe. And I think we're generally drawing up quite a warm sort of southerly, southeasterly flow in uh, many areas. Uh, we still have a 500 millibar height, uh, height anomaly. is looking with low pressure or trough of low through those western southwestern areas combined with higher pressure though up across the far north of Europe. And again, we probably bring up the wind from like a southerly, southeasterly direction. So temperature anomalies um, this week are looking at very warm across much of northern and western Europe, but there are exceptions. Spain, Portugal looking rather cool as the southern parts of France. When we get into northern France, that's where we start picking up the milder temperatures. And uh, particularly for the UK, Ireland, below country Germany, uh, and up to Denmark, we see temperature anomalies there between 3 and 6 degrees. But they get even higher, those temperature anomalies, as we go even further north into uh, central parts of uh, Norway and Sweden. There, the temperature anomalies actually are 6 to 10 degrees above average. So, really warm across the far north of Europe. Um, we come down into the far eastern portion of Europe, which is really like Belarus, Ukraine, and uh, down into Black Sea. And then south of that, Romania, uh, down towards Greece, Turkey, for example. There we return back to cooler than average temperatures. And into the Mediterranean, we have a bit of a three-way split, really. Looks rather cool on the eastern side of the bed and through Spain and Portugal. But through the central swathe of the Mediterranean um, and over the Asiatic King towards the uh, Balkans, there we see the temperature anomaly above average, warmer than average temperatures. And precipitation wise, so we've got the low pressure, that's where the wettest weather is, and that's really through northern parts of Spain and Portugal, particularly into France. Again, much of Germany, particularly western Germany, the low countries, into Ireland and England, Wales anyway, rather wet than normal rather wetter than normal. It is drier for uh, Scotland, and it's also drier when we come down into these more southern parts of Spain, Portugal, into the central bowl of the Med. They drive a condition extending through the central and eastern portion of Mediterranean, and then we run up the eastern side of Europe into the north and the northeast, and there we have driving average conditions through Scandinavia and Nordic, as well as Baltic state regions, Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania too, all looking drier than normal in the week ahead. Week 2 will be the 20th to the 27th of May, so this week we'll still have some low pressure through these western portions of Europe again. Higher pressure is away to the east and the northeast once more. Not much change really from the scenario we've got this week. 500 millibar heights, maybe taking that low pressure a bit further out into the Atlantic and raising the heights slightly through some of those northern and western parts of Europe. The temperature anomaly is above average in many areas, so right way from the far west all the way over to the eastern portion. Um, we see largely above average temperature, just pretty Portugal and southwest parts of Spain, a little bit cooler, and into the far north of Finland, northwest of Russia, there's a little bit cooler, and around the Black Sea, and so some of, some of those far eastern uh, regions of Europe, it's a little bit cooler for you there. But that said, most areas next week are, are uh, milder than average, um, particularly so, again, through some parts of uh, Norway and Sweden, where around Three to six degrees above normal. And temperature, uh, precipitation, I should say, anomalies next week look like that. So, once more, we find that it's driving average in the far north and northeast Europe, Scandinavia, Nordic, and Baltic Sea state areas coming out above 
below average with um, precipitation. Um, and down into the south, we've got driving all conditions through uh, the Med into North Africa. Then it looks like there's a swathe of wetter weather from Ireland right way over to the Black Sea. And it particularly encompasses, I would have thought, like Ireland, England, Wales, northern parts of France, Germany, the Low Countries, and then into some of those um, more central regions like Austria, Hungary, um, and those sort of areas. Right, that's that week. Uh, week three will be the 27th of May to the 3rd of June. So uh, this week looks more unsettled for the north and northwest. You have actually some low pressure coming back in through here. Higher pressure waving down towards the far south and southeastern portion. What about 500 millibar heights? Weakening signals from higher pressure through the uh, Med down towards North, North Africa and in the North Atlantic up towards Greenland. Chuff of low in across all parts of the day. I think in the end the chuff of low might be extending through that sort of area. Temperature normally still above average in many areas, beginning to come down a little bit maybe in the far north and northwest of Europe. But that said, still slightly on the margin of an average side. And most other areas coming out above average too. You really just have to go up to the extreme north of uh, Sweden and Finland, whereas northwest of Russia to find um, cooler than average uh, temperature anomalies. Otherwise, it's above average, really, in most areas. And uh, precipitation, well, we can signal as ever week three, but it does look a little bit wetter in this uh, northwest region. So, Ireland, UK, France, low countries, probably Germany, and then up to uh, Norway, Sweden, possibly Finland, a little bit west of it all there. And then across these more southern portions of Europe, it's drier through central, some parts of Spain, Portugal, into the central bowl of the Med, and maybe onto the far eastern side of Europe, looking a little bit drier through there as well. <coughs> so, sorry everybody, week four will be the 3rd to the 10th of June. Um, now, this is a very weak signal. Some very weak low pressure in the Atlantic and some very weak high pressure over on the east side of Europe. Otherwise, there's not much there to uh, work with. 500 millibar heights also not revealing uh, that much. Perhaps showing some high pressure through the central southern parts of Europe, but uh, um, really weak signal. Temperature anomaly, just largely average or slightly above, really, in most areas. It looks like the warmest temperature is perhaps shifting more towards the eastern side of Europe through here. That means northern and northwestern regions might be cooling down slightly. Um, again, it is a weak signal, though. Um, Substation wise, it does look wetter than normal uh, in the far west, so from the Atlantic in towards Ireland of the UK. Uh, maybe towards Denmark as well, some Western average conditions otherwise, though, as we always, or very often find anyway, week four, showing uh, a really weak signal. Well, that's your 30-day look ahead done. Let's just go for weeks five and six data before we go, because the charts are there, so we might as well look at them. So week five will be the 10th to the 17th of June. Um, now, this week could be turning more unsettled just more generally across many parts of Europe with lower pressure um, pushing through. What about 500 millibar heights? Again, really weak signal, very difficult to decipher much from that. Temperature anomaly, um, average is slightly above in many areas, particularly in Eastern Europe above average, near or normal, uh, or no signal further west. And precipitation wise, still looks like it could be a little bit on the wet side in this northwestern region and drier down towards the south and the southwest. Then last, lastly, week six will be the 17th to the 24th of June. And uh, we're looking like that. So wetter than normal again across the far uh, north of Europe with low pressure through up there, maybe. Otherwise, it's another really weak signal. And 500 millibar heights again could be drier down the south with that area of higher pressure. Uh, let's have a look at the temperature anomaly, average slightly above again. And lastly, precipitation. So yes, it's wetter in the far north and northwest and drier across much of those southern portions of Europe. But again, the signals are very, very weak, I have to say, when we get to weeks four, five, and six, um, you know, really weak signals. Right, well, that's how uh, things looking this week. Remember, just a snapshot of what the model is showing. It could look different when we look at this again next Tuesday. So, uh, we shall see. And we are going to do a European UK and Ireland focus video, I should say, with this model on Saturday morning, actually. Um, if you enjoy the forecast, please do like, share, subscribe, and show everyone board to you about. And we're going to be back later on. We can take the board team there, including all of breaking features. Come back for that later. For this week's extended European Outlook, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.